Happy Monday, everybody. God bless you. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Let me turn my phone down so that I am not interrupted by that or anything. Um, hope you're having a great day. It it was a little spotty. It never rained over my house, but it kind of had a little spotty of rain different places. And um, Candace, I thought about you today. I, I, I said a prayer over you and your family today. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to get on here and kind of encourage you in the Lord and um, go through some things with you. And then um, I want to make an announcement next yeah, next Monday, I should be fine. I'm leaving for uh, Pastor Aaron and Amanda's at Restoring Hope for Overflow in just a couple of days. And so we're going to be busy doing that. Overflow is their yearly conference. It's really powerful. And some of you guys um, are going to be heading to, to Tennessee. Some of some of our people are already in Tennessee. So we're pretty we're pretty stoked about that. But anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am going to go ahead and get started and change my screen so I can focus on what we got to say. Um, I want us to pray. Um, if you have the news, um, it's made national news, but um, the town not too far from here where I lived for five years, the mall in which I did all my shopping at, it was so funny because I thought about headed, heading over to Greenwood this weekend and then I just didn't. And, um, but anyway, I, uh, a young man armed with a rifle walked into the food court yesterday at 6 p.m in open fire and I have to say I've, I've been in that food court thousands of times and um, I used to take my little girl there and get Chick-fil-A nuggets and then go over and get a cookie and there's like a little on the other side of the mall there's like a little play area and I used to take her to that mall and she would play either chicken nuggets and play what I made my phone calls and uh, wrote some things down and so you know even though I don't live in Greenwood any longer I'm, I haven't been removed from it very much and matter of fact if I was to go to a mall it would be to go back to Greenwood Mall anyway so Four people were killed and multiple injured, including a 12-year-old little girl was hit in the back with a bullet. Um, she survived, but I'm sure it was, I can't even, I can't even imagine um, how traumatic that must be. Just like when these, these gunmen go into our schools and these teachers and these children. And, you know, we live in this, this is the hour we live in. This is the day um, that we live in, and we're not been forewarned. The Bible talks about these things, and um, I want to say something right here, and I hope that you understand me. When we start seeing all these signs of the times, we are um, we are commanded through the Scripture to look up. For our redemption, it, it draweth nigh. And we're also looking, uh, the last day church, we're looking for the, the coming of the Lord and those kind of things. And uh, our hope to be found in that rescue. Um, with that being said, we are still here. There has not been the end of time yet. There has not, the Bible says that no man knoweth the, the day or the hour, but we would know the seasons. He has put us on a timeline and we would know the seasons. There would be signs of the times. I remember, I can't remember what revival I was in, but I felt very, very strong. I, know I was on my way to Israel. I was actually getting ready to preach on the Mount of, of, of Olives. And I remember thinking that one of the signs 
that I felt because it was on the Mount of Olives that Jesus stood and began to prophesy about these things. Um, I remember feeling that one of the things that we need to pay attention to is what we are to do while we're still here. We are always looking for escape. And, you know, when there is trouble or trauma, of course, it's, it's, our, it's, our, it's in our nature to want to run, to escape. But according to the word of God, while we're here, we are to be getting our minds renewed. Every day that we're still here, either because there's not been an accident. I mean, some people have gone to the grave prematurely. I believe that. I believe that some have been just called home. But while we're still breathing, we have opportunity to receive from Jesus and to receive his word and to transform into who he has called us to be. So I think that even though we're to watch and be ready and know the signs of the time, what's also just as important is that we are mindful that we are still here for a purpose, that we're not here to just skim by and then escape. Because if you have that mindset, then you're going to miss the very thing that he's called you to and the thing, the revelation that he's had for you. And boy, when you're standing before him on that great and terrible day, he will show you what you could have had. And I, I just, that's just kind of been a trumpet of mine. And so the Bible tells us that tomorrow is not promised to no one. I'm sure, I'm, I'm positive. It was a one man and, th and three women that were killed in the mall yes, last night. It happened at 6 p.m. last night. Of course, I don't know if these people even knew each other because the gunman came in and he just began to spray bullets, you know, and where they hit, they hit. So I'm sure the four people that were killed probably didn't know each other. But guess what? They had a story. They had... A t they had so many days of their life where they had an opportunity to get to know the Lord. And I don't know who they were and I don't know their story, but they had one. We all have our story. And I'm thinking when they left that day to go to the mall, maybe they were getting ready to do some early um, school shopping. Because school in Indiana starts really early. I think also where you're at. I mean, used to, school didn't start till September. Now school starts the 1st of August here. And so people are gearing up to for school. So I'm sure there were some school shoppers in there. I'm sure people were just getting out on a Sunday evening. Um, never dreaming. They never dreamed. It never, probably never even crossed their minds that they would never leave that mall, that they would never see home again. They would never see their loved ones again. They would never, that would be it. They didn't know tomorrow is not promised. So what the enemy wants to do with us constantly is he wants to distract us on the things that, over here and distract us on things over there. And I'm not saying that they're not important things, but I'm saying that there are some things that we get distracted by. Maybe you get stressed out by it. Maybe, maybe you're afraid of, maybe you're just worn out. Listen, <laughs> I have literally, literally been fighting not to be mentally worn out. I have I, this house has been full of people since I came home. The night I came home from Texas, it began. And there's still people in my house. <laughs> and you know what? It's summer. It's our first summer in this house. All of my family is excited to come and 
come out to the woods and spend some time here. And guess what? I want them to. We've had a wonderful time, but I'm, I'm exhausted. And at the same time, my, my son, my oldest, has made a transition. He has moved from Texas to Indiana and starting a new job. And my husband's training him. And my my brothers are all training. My brother-in-laws, I call my brothers, are all help training him. And that schedule is crazy. And with with my son came a chocolate Labrador puppy. Y'all see my face? <laughs> Okay, and, and, and it, it's just been, it's been fun. <laughs> Y'all believe me? <laughs> and so there's so much going on. There's so much transition. And plus, we're still working on the church. We've had to change banks. We, matter of fact, the, the man I'm working with, I was on the phone with yesterday, and I got a word of the Lord from, from a, a pastor that I respect deeply and, and said, be cautious, go slow, take your time because I don't want to put, I don't want to be in the wrong building. And so we're still in the process of trying to figure that out. We have families. I haven't invited anybody to move here. <laughs> of course, we have families moving here making plans to move here to go to this church and I don't got a building yet I mean my life has been just really fun the last few days and I feel like even though all these things are exciting and I've enjoyed all my company and I'm, I'm I finally have my whole complete family in my in my in the same state that's the first time that's happened in years like I had all these wonderful things happening but I'm, I'm, I'm tired. But when I heard the news of the shooting, what my tiredness and what the things that I was thinking about did not compare to what I couldn't even imagine the loved ones of those people were having to deal with. There's always someone that their story is, seems to be a little bit harder. Everybody has a story. Every you guys have your journey and there's ups and downs and there's times you're tired and there's times that you're fearful and there's times that you worry and there's been times that you've been angry and there's been all these emotions you've experienced them all but your story does not change the word of God and that's what you can never forget your story is is not um unattainable to his presence the word of god will keep you the word of god will sustain you the word of god will strengthen you when there's change happening listen i feel like we've been running smooth for such a long time and i knew change was happening i just didn't know what it was look, gonna look like change can be difficult even when it's good change it can be difficult it can be scary it can be all these things and that's why it's so important that we learn that we cast all of our cares upon the Lord. If you're casting cares on other people, you're wasting time. That's just that's just giving the enemy more time to worry you. The minute the minute something comes that is tiresome, that's stressful, that is uh, you don't have the answer for whatever it is, fearful, you're angry immediately take that thought into captivity and cast that and give that over to the Lord and say, I, I need a word today. Give me this day, your daily bread. I need to break bread today. I need to break this bread in remembrance of you today. Communion is not just a cracker and grape juice, but it is, it's, it's a spiritual truth. I know churches do demonstration of the truth, a natural demonstration with the crackers and in the grape juice. But let me tell you something. It is a spiritual truth that the breaking of the word, applying that, breaking it, and then eating it, digesting exactly what you're in need of. Do you know that one thing that I've learned? 
I know my mamas that have been pregnant on here, you know what I'm saying? When you get pregnant and your hormones are going crazy and everything's going crazy and you'll, you may go through some weeks where everything makes you sick, then all of a sudden you crave something. And when you crave something and you get it, it's like the best you've ever had. Your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it'll be the oddest stuff. And what it is, is that's your body telling you exactly what you needed. I remember I was traveling on the road for a long time, just traveling, traveling, traveling. And I was doing my thing. And I went through this, this phase out of nowhere. And I wasn't pregnant. I began to crave asparagus. Like who craves asparagus? I mean, who craves asparagus? I craved it. I craved it. So I went, my husband got me some asparagus. I began to grill it. I think I ate it four nights in a row, just threw some on the grill. And there was something in that my body was needing. It was telling me, you need this. And so the, in the spirit, it's the same. There'll be times in the middle of your craziness, your, your spirit man is going to need to break bread and there's going to be some scriptures. There's going to be something in there that you're, you're in need of. And until you fill it with the word of God, you're going to be unsatisfied. And as long as you're unsatisfied, then you are going to be stressful. That's when the fear comes in. That's when all these things come in. None of this is what I have written down on this paper over here. Maybe all of this was for somebody. I know that during the week, I have some of your faces have come before me and I've prayed for you. Just send out, I don't know if she's on here or not, but I've prayed for you this week, you and Pastor Stephen, I've prayed for you. And I keep waiting on the Lord to give me a word or something, but I, I just, I, the Lord has brought you to my, just to pray over you. Just, I'm so thankful. There's so many of you guys. That maybe we don't talk, maybe we don't box, we don't, we don't communicate, we only see each other on, on here on Monday nights, but the Lord will bring you to my mind, and I'll pray for you, and how I pray, I may not know the situation which you're going through, if God doesn't show it to me, and God doesn't tell it to me, I consider it none of my business, but when he brings your face, or brings you to my mind, it doesn't matter if I know the situation because God does. And I just pray that that day that you, the body is being broken and that you are digesting and that you are feeding your spirit man exactly what it needs in order for the word of the Lord to begin to speak to whatever situation that you're in at that time. What kept coming to me is I've talked on uh, three videos about the lion um, it's, it's no, um, happenstance that I had the open vision of the lion. And then immediately it was like, my life went bam, 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 bam. I mean, it's just like one event after another, after another, after another, after another. And when I have a lot going on, I I'm, I'm literally, I physically feel drained I physically feel very tired right now and um so I've been actually um concentrating and keeping my mind clear for the Holy Spirit I've been I want to I want to say I've been keeping Rana still so that the Holy Spirit can can lead me through this I feel like I'm going through um, some, I don't want to say dark waters, um, cause there's, I can't see anything bad happening really around me. I can feel all of this pressure and I have to be in prophetic. I have to look, am I in discernment of the church? Am I in discernment of some of you? But I feel this weightiness of heaviness I have felt this week a tired a, a slumber like I want I, I want to just go to, go to bed and sleep all day and all night and all day and all day and all night it's it's not 
it's not normal for me. So I'm, I know I'm picking something up. I feel this, this heaviness. Is that you, Andrea? Just tired. Like no matter how, I, I'm sleeping all night long, but come 12, one o'clock, I am literally can't even, I'm so tired. So I began to tell the Lord, I feel like I'm feeling there's a warfare going on in the church in which we need to pay attention to. We don't need to fall prey to it but we need to pay attention to it because it's an opportunity for us not only to grow, but to be active in the signs of the time. Instead of like what I was saying before, instead of just saying, you know, let's escape, let's, let's, let's hide, let's, let's escape, but let's take this that's happening and let's get into the word of God and let's feed I think that's what I think I'm feeling. I think it's time for God's people to feed. There's times to run. There's times to shout. There's times to dance. There's times to be still. There's times to be quiet. It's time to feed your spirit. It's time more than any other time. Um, one of the scriptures that I went to you guys know that I think we've been ministered on this. This is help if I turn my Bible right side up and not upside down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Weren't you guys, you guys, y'all get the best of me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was going to preach to y'all, preach to y'all with my Bible upside down. That's what my grandpa Taylor used to do because he couldn't read. He couldn't read or write, so my grandma would read to him the word, and he would memorize the Bible, and then he would go preach the house down, and I'd look on the pulpit, and this, this Bible would be completely upside down, <laughs> but Isaiah 40, chapter 40, verse 31, this is the most popular scripture. Everybody on here is going to know it, and but I, I wanted to just kind of pause here for a second. Um. Let's just go up to um, verse 28, and I'm in Ch Isaiah chapter 40. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. See, he's, and he wonderful. He is alpha. He's omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's all in all, right? He's not, he has not, there's nothing new under the sun. He's not surprised or put off by anything. Uh, at the end of there, fainteth not, praise God. <laughs> because if God faints, we've all had it. We might as well shut the Zoom down and all panic. I've always said, when God panics, then you can panic. <laughs> so until he panics, we don't have to panic. But he fainteth not, neither is weary. He's not weary. We have been weary. The Bible says for us not to be weary in, do, in, in, in well-doing. In, in Texas terms, that means don't grow tired ever of what's correct. Don't, grow don't ever grow tired of what's right. Because if you ever throw your hands up and say, well, to heck with it. Then, then you have given way of the enemy. He wants you never to grow weary, never. He wants you to constantly actively fight because that is the dwelling. That is the dwelling. That's the continuing to exist. So he says, neither, he's neither weary. If we're to be in the image of who he is, then we can actually put us there. We don't faint, neither do we, are we weary. You can put, if we're to be like Jesus, that we need to put ourselves in that category too. There is no searching of his understanding. 29, he giveth power to the faint. <laughs> can you tell this is what I've been trying to feed myself this week? He giveth power to the faint. 
praise God. The Bible says he is the mighty God. He, is, he has the spirit of might. He has the spirit of power. That power is strength. It's, his, it's the, strong, the strength of him. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Am I the only one that's about to fall over? <laughs> Amen. The, the lion and not Judah. The lion coming, seeking who he may devour, has been walking to and fro, looking for those that are throwing, up, throwing in the towel. It's not us. It's not going to be us. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they, circle they. Remember, are you a they and a them? Come on, this word of God is for everybody with ears to hear. However, not everybody's a they. Not everybody's going to be a them. Because it's a choice. It's a choice in which we have to make every day. Candace. You have to choose this. You have to choose him over and over and over again. I know you've been so tired. I know you've been weary, but you're going to have to learn. And I don't ever talk to this woman, but she keeps crossing my mind this week. You're going to have to fight. You need to say to the enemy, if I have to suit up battle, for the rest of my life, I'm going to stand before him and he's going to see himself in my life. If it costs me everything, I'm never giving up. I have prayed for Candace this week. I have prayed for Jacinda and Pastor Steve this week. Your faces just keep coming because there's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of busyness happening. To the point where you're like, ah, and I could feel it. So I, I, I was doing dishes and I was scrubbing this glass and I saw Jacinda's face and I stopped, threw my glass down in the sink. And I said, Lord, whatever, whatever is going on, I don't need to know the details. I lift up Jacinda before you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak, I prophesy strength, the power of might over you, Pastor Taylor, and over Jacinda, the power of might, the anointing spirit of might. He is a mighty God right now over you. The winds of change. I give you praise. He's got your world, Pastor, in his hands. Remember that old song and saints? I hear that. He's got your world in his hands. In Jesus' name. Come on, just take for a minute. I know this is Zoom and this will go on YouTube. But just for a minute. If you'll just, in your spirit, just reach up just even a little bit. You'll feel him. Somebody needs to go ahead and cast what is what you've been carrying and give it to him right now and i come against the spirit of slumber i come against this weariness i come against this heaviness father the things that are causing us to be heavy it's the enemy that's trying to distract because what's really happening is God is bringing change and pointing you into a direction in which you've been believing him for. But the enemy is trying to distract to make you feel like you're going to miss it, but you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. Amen. So going back to scripture. 
it says, but they, we are the they's, but they, not everybody, that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So they, those that wait, that means those that are looking, even when you're tired, you're looking. Come on, somebody. Even when the enemy is trying to distract you in the midst of a change, there's some, there's some change that's taken place for Pastor Taylor and Jacinda that the enemy is trying to get involved. That's why it's kind of cloudy right now. But the Lord is changing some things. I just keep feeling that all week for you. But those that wait, those that in the midst of where the enemy is trying to distract, if we continue to expect God's hand to move in the middle of distraction, that's, that's, who, that's what he's talking about, those that wait. We look eagerly for him. When there's all this stuff going on in my life and people coming and people going and this over here and chocolate Labrador puppies in my house, y'all know how OCD I am with my house and all this is going on in the middle of that, besides casting my care upon the Lord, I begin to become eager to find him in the, in the midst of all this. Remember when we talked about following? Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 where it said follow? Remember the first word was follow there? And it meant to passionately pursue. In 1 Corinthians, it said follow. Remember? And it meant to pursue him with passion. Well, here in Isaiah 40, when it says wait, it's kind of saying the same thing. He's saying eagerly look. So waiting on the Lord doesn't mean, well, I hope he does something soon. <laughs> I'm just going to sit right here and I'm just going to wait. No, 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 no. This waiting is a service. It that's as matter of fact, why you, waiting on the Lord is probably the most productive personally in your personal encounter with Jesus than any other thing. Because you are pursuing him, you're eagerly looking for him. What are the scriptures that you need in order to withstand all this distraction from this lion? What are the scriptures that you need so that you are not devoured? What are the scriptures that you need for your situation that is going to shield you from this prowler? You understand what I'm saying? And so those that wait, those that hope, that's what that's meaning. Those that stand knowing Hope is, a, is a, a positive imagination with an expectancy. Those that are hoping for, for knowing that you are set up for God to touch your life, to touch your mind, to touch your finances, touch your body, touch your family, touch these things. Why? Because the word of God has promised you. But it's not. It's for those that have ears to hear is for those that want to not just sit and want to escape a thing. Sometimes God doesn't cause evil upon us. He's not up there trying to cause you uh, with a with a whip saying, "Well, you didn't do this, so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have this." I used. To, I've heard preachers preach that if you don't pay an offering, God's gonna take your offering out in your tires. I have heard a preacher say that if you don't do certain things, God's going to cause you to have a blowout on your car and he's going to get his money one way or the other. That was his sermon. If you ever hear a preacher preach that, run, run, run. <laughs> God is not up there trying to say, well, if they don't do this, I'm taking it out. I'm, I'm going to put cancer on them then. 
why would he put disease, complications, sickness upon you when he gave his son to be the way of escape for that to free you? See how ignorant religion can be? Okay. So in the midst, he's not causing it. He is the escape. He's the way of escape. Remember when the storm was on the Sea of Galilee and he came walking across the water? He, can, he chose the stormiest night to walk on water. He could have done it any other time. He chose, he chose when, the, when they thought they were going to die and drown and the storm and the darkness was around him and the waves were beating the boat. He decided to show up and be a way of escape for them to be the peace that they needed to make it to the other side. He's always going to be what you need to get to the other side. You can't remove him from the equation. That becomes the danger. And so it says, they that wait, those that expect, that hope, that look eagerly, that pursue him with passion. shall renew their strength. But let me tell you like this. This is not just any strength. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The Bible says those that wait, this also means fresh strength. I want that to sink in for just a minute. Have you ever been in a situation and you knew that you need to be strong and you knew you need to be positive and you need and you kept it up. You're like, I got to do it. I'm going to be strong. But in so many days of it, you still was going to be strong. You still was going to be uh, positive, but you, you were still tired. If his mercy is new every morning, according to the word of God, those that passionately pursue him, those that eagerly seek after him, he said he will also supply fresh strength you're talking about strength in which comes supernaturally not from because you ate good that day or you took your vitamins or you ate your wheaties or whatever it is but there is a holy ghost freshness not just mercy but a power, a strength that comes when you begin to pursue him, when you begin to eagerly go after this hope, expecting him and expecting nothing less of him in the midst of whatever decision you're having to make. There's somebody you're having to make, there's decisions that are having to be made and they're pressing on you. This is not the time to stress out. This is the time to pursue. I'm preaching to myself. Y'all just happen to be here. And I'm preaching to someone else. Whoever wants to grab this word, grab it. Grab it. Take it for yourself. Don't wait on a personal prophecy. I am prophesying. He is telling you in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the darkness, passionately pursue me this is not the time to lay down and throw your hands up and say I can't do this thing anymore this is not the time to feel sorry for yourself this is not the time to blame everybody around you or even blame God but this is the moment to wait upon him why he wants you to serve him in the midst of of of, of, of your adversary in the midst of 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 needing a healing, while you're waiting on the manifestation of the healing, while you're waiting on the financial breakthrough, while you're waiting on your miracle, whatever it is, he wants you to expect, be eagerly, be passionate, be strong. Because why? Because you have fresh strength. Those who serve him. He says, listen, those that wait upon the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength, fresh strength. Somebody needs to write that down. And you need to get up and say, you know what? Thank you, God, because your mercy is new. But today, fresh strength. 
Remember last last Monday, I kept saying, I kept prophesying it. I am a prophecy fulfilled. That was a powerful word. We need to continue with that. Some of you don't need to be prophesying just even to yourself, but if 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 God lays somebody on your heart this week, which He has, like I said, like when I saw while I was praying for Jacinda, I kept saying, Jacinda is a prophecy fulfilled. There are things that the God has for Pastor Stephen and Jacinda in which they can't even fed them. And it looks impossible to them. But with God, all things are possible. Why? Because he has fresh strength. He doesn't run out. He doesn't wear out. He doesn't stress out. He doesn't give out ever. He never, never picture this, leaves you nor forsake you. You have nothing to fear. Why? Because of the spirit of might, because of the spirit of power. We don't have any fear. My husband, I was telling him how horrible that must have been for those mamas in that food court when that gunman came in you know what my husband said to me it shocked me but then I got to thinking about it I thought you know what that's right I believe that and this is what he said you can choose not to believe it or not to believe it I chose to believe it he said you know if there was somebody in there with the power of might that gun went and went off That's what he said. And for a minute, I thought, huh? And then I thought, that's why it's important that the church of Jesus Christ grows up and quit complaining and quit feeling sorry for yourself and quit making excuses because it doesn't take another gun to take out a gun. Matter of fact, according to the word of God, the Bible says someone comes to try to take your life, lay, lay it down. Someone comes and steals your coat. Come on, y'all know these scriptures. Slaps you on one cheek, turn and give him the other cheek. Don't make sense, does it? And yet that's what he's called us to do. That's why Stephen ran towards those who were stoning him. I've said that before because there was a power of strength and might upon him that he did not love his life unto death. He knew who he belonged to. He was a dweller. And yet, if sometimes we think, well, you know, that that mall now is tainted. And how could anybody ever go back there again? But those that understand the power of fresh strength and those that understand the power of his might and we walk in that. If we don't take this word and walk in it and allow it to be tangible in our life. I only know the word right here. You've heard me. You've heard me tease. And really, now that I think about it, I, th I think I was prophesying not being funny. Sometimes I try to be funny. And I tell you, every time I get on an airplane, I tell myself, these people are lucky I'm on this plane. <laughs> I do. I, I tell myself that every time. And I say it just like that. I say it just like that. When I'm walking on there, I'm like, mm -hmm. I look at the people the men and the women, I think you are, you better thank your lucky stars I'm on this plane. And you think, well, that's arrogant. Uh-uh. It's the power of strength. It's the power of might. Knowing that God is not finished with me yet. And as long as I'm on that plane, I don't care if we lose all the engines. We ain't, we ain't, we are not going to die. He will supernaturally keep us. Why? Because I have to finish. He has a work in me. There's a fresh strength that I walk with. 
And that that caught me off guard. We have got to think say that's is that sounds arrogant. No, you've got to start thinking like that. No weapon formed against those for them, for thems and for theys. No weapon formed against them is going to prosper. They said a, a good Samaritan that was carrying a pistol legally is the one that took him out and they're praising him for that. But what would have really stopped it is if Pastor Stephen Taylor would have been in that mall and the power of might walked into that court, that food court. That gun would have jammed up. That boy would have hit the floor. The demons would have started screaming. He would have ran over there, delivered that guy, 22 years old, and freed him from his torment. He could have gotten saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and went on to become one of the greatest revivalists in the world instead of being dead. This is the power of fresh strength. So that sounds ridiculous. No, it sounds like kingdom to me. Why would God choose you and I to be in such a fallen world if he did not equip us to be the light? What was the purpose of being a light to this dark world? Have you ever thought about it? Listen, that's just that they that wait upon the Lord. We ain't even finished that, that verse. See how much is in that just the first few words? They that wait upon the Lord. The Lord shall renew their strength. That word strength right there means he will renew the power of God in them. He will renew and make strong the word of God in them. He will renew and make strong the might in him. That Hebrew word for might, if, I, if I'm saying this right, is, is it gibber? Gibber? It's G I B B. O R, I believe it means warrior. So he's saying he shall renew their strength. That word strength means he will renew them to become warriors. Those that expect, those that walk in hope, those that passionately pursue him in the middle of destruction, those that look eagerly into the word of God to prophesy that word into their situation, no matter what the situation is, shall receive fresh strength. They shall change quickly, the Bible says. They shall go through this trial quickly. I'm also telling you this. It means to pass through quickly, to go through quickly. But guess what? It also means to sprout up, to be fresh like green grass, to sprout up, to be full of strength, to be full of power, and to be a warrior. And that's what? For those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength means. I didn't even finish it. That's what that means. We didn't even finish the, the verse. That's just what that means. Isn't that something? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, this is what I've had to renew my mind with this week. And as we go through this, I had a pastor friend to call me about our discipleship, our church, because the Lord blessed us financially. And then we found a building that made sense. And then things started just kind of going like this. And I talked to the, my friend that is um, the other day I, and updated him on the things. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And, and I don't know which way to go and something's not feeling right, blah, blah, blah. And I was reminded of a, pro the Lord said he would reveal his plan. He would, so he, he would always go before us. He's also our rear guard. So we're, we're surrounded by him, praise God. But she said, I felt like the Lord may tell you to walk 
cautiously. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry on this. And I thought, you know what? I can't. I can't get this wrong. This is too important. But the, 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 I could feel also the pressure and the stress of wanting and the, and the want to, of wanting to get this church going. I'm excited. I'm ready. I've even told the Lord, what if I even, you know, I want to get, I'm going to get carnal here for just, I even told the Lord, what are you waiting on? <laughs> See, even I were like, ah. And this, what I'm sharing with you tonight, is what the Lord has been giving me. And as he's been giving me this word, I've seen some of your faces. And I release this word and I prophesy this word to you. Do you want me to tell you one more time real quick? So Isaiah 40, or 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That means those that wait, those that look, those that expect, those that hope, those that pursue him with passion, those that look eagerly towards him, he shall give fresh strength to. They shall change quickly. They shall go through the trial. They shall go through the fire quickly. They shall sprout up again with power, with strength, with might as a warrior. That's what that means. Amen. God bless you. Well, we thank you, Father. I pray for the, I'm looking at some of your messages. I pray right now for all of you guys that have been weary and has been tired and not been able to rest. I prophesy, remember, this is the year of the rest. And the enemy, the lion, not the lion of the tribe of Judah, but the enemy. He goes about like a roaring lion, trying to seek who he may devour. I want to tell you this. Lion not only also means. Let me see where I put that. He is a symbol of strength, uh, brave, courageous, strong, and strength. But the enemy part of that is, is a false strength, a false courageous, a, a, an anti-fierce, lying in wait, those kind of things. So we are going to come against that one in Jesus' name. All right, guys, it's 8.50 here in Indiana, nine o'clock. Be sure and continue to pray. I leave this week. We're going to be over at um, Overflow with Pastors Aaron and Amanda. It's going to be an incredible uh, conference in their brand new building at Cross Plains. So I'm excited to see that. And um, I will see you guys next Monday night. I know we'll have a lot to talk about from the conference. For those of you that are traveling to Tennessee, happy travels, safe travels. Some of, some of, there's quite a few people that's already been traveling and they're already getting there. And uh, pray for me in this Labrador. I can hear him whining at the door. He somehow has fell in love with me and wants to follow me everywhere. And listen, I just prophesied this little dog. His name is Doug. He's about six months old, but he's big, kind of big. And I tell him, I said, Doug, you will not chew on my furniture. You hear me? I'm prophesying to you, Doug. You will not go to the restroom in this house. And for we're going to have a supernatural miracle with you. You are not going to shed in Miss Rana's house. Okay? Y'all believe it? I, I'm believing it in Jesus' name. <laughs> so we ain't going to shed. We ain't going to have no accidents. And we are not chewing Miss Rana's furniture. Oh, he's down there crying. <laughs> anyway, God bless you. I'm going to go. My son has come home from his first day at his new job. He's excited. He's staying with me until he transitions. He does not want to live with his mother. He keeps reminding me of that. I don't think I'm that bad, but he does not want to live with me. 
And uh, I've already given him a prophetic word. And that's probably why he doesn't want to be living with me because he doesn't want me just prophesying all the time. But he is loving his new job and he is on his way. And I think he's already found him a house that he's going to transition to in a, in a few days, probably in a couple of weeks. But um, just pray for him. God is doing a good work in his life. Anyway, I love you. God bless you. And I will see you guys down the road next Monday. Bye. Happy fingers.